Hello, beloved leaders. What a joy to talk to you again through our weekly podcast on Biblical Leadership Institute. As you all know, the Bible contains so many practical teachings of life, and uh, my aim is to unearth and talk about them so we can live the Bible instead of just reading it. Today, uh, the title is called Breaking Point, where I discuss biblical insights on the importance of taking things slowly and wisely. If you're blessed by these podcasts, uh, please consider subscribing to this channel, sharing it with your friends and family, as well as signing up for updates in www.biblicalleadershipinstitute.org as well. Let's see what breaking point is from the perspective of uh, Christian leadership and how to deal with it. I'll catch you on the other side. Proverbs 25.16 says, If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit it. The wise man here teaches the importance of understanding and respecting our limits. Why? Because we humans have this tendency to get overly excited and as a result, end up biting off more than we can chew. This concept of spreading too thin is not new at all. In the spur of our enthusiasm, everything seems possible to get done. And in the process of it, we fail to factor in the complexities that come along. And that causes stress, anxiety, and a load of other problems. Ecclesiastes 12.12 says, Of making many books, there is no end, and uh, much study wearies the body. What the author is trying to convey here is that there are so many books on the face of the earth that if you decide to read all of them, you're obviously going to fail. So taking into account the number of books available, read just a few, only what you can handle. This is usually overlooked by humans, uh, so I wanted to talk about how leaders need to be cautious of this reality. Here are three important lessons that might come in handy for leaders. Number one, encourage and accept the art of saying no. The mark of a good leader is this, that the team members do not hesitate to say no to a leader's request if it is something they cannot handle. This answer no is such a hard thing to say, isn't it? especially when it comes to church or ministry-related activities, the general perception is that saying no is wrong and can even grieve God. So we end up saying yes to everything, don't we? Jesus in Matthew 26, 41 said, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Let me ask you this, uh, what do you think is better? Saying yes and not being able to do it or saying no so that someone else can actually complete it. Think about it. Leaders should make sure they contain their team members if they are too ambitious and and help them realize that human potential has limits. Proverbs 27, 12 says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. This prudence is key to having a good reputation among others. Your fellow believers or workers should be able to trust you, and for that, you need to earn credibility. To be credible, you need to stand on your promise and deliver it. To be able to deliver, you need to make sure you have the capability and time, isn't it? It all adds up. So always remember Proverbs 25.16. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit it. I urge all leaders listening to this to impress this message upon your teams and encourage them to say no whenever appropriate. The second one is do not push the limits of others. Uh, Let's take for example, you ask one of your nicest friends to help you get some ice from the fridge. Being a nice person, I'm sure they are going to head to the fridge. While they are filling up the ice for you, uh, let's say you tell them, can you please fill water in the ice tray? They would oblige and uh, while they are filling water, uh, let's say you tell them, 
can you also make sure all the ice trays are filled? Now, when they are filling the ice trays, imagine if you tell them, can you also make me a lemonade? I'm sure even your nicest friend is going to explode at this and yell back at you. At the end of it, you did not get the ice you originally wanted and most importantly, lost a great friend. If you look at this incident, each of the requests you placed uh, was not complicated individually. If you had requested one every week uh, they came home, your nice friend would not have any problem doing them for you. So it does not matter what the work is. Instead, what really matters is how many did you ask for at a particular time. Let's take a deeper look at this. Uh, when you added one more request to your original request, you were actually not adding anything more because the one more or the second request is generally done out of courtesy. But the third one is where you went slightly overboard and uh, suddenly even the second request, which was a courtesy, starts to sound like an added burden. The tipping point is the fourth one, when all four requests now sound unreasonable and you become that terrible, terrible person. Leaders of all need to be extremely careful about this, especially in ministry uh, when people are committed and are willing to go a long way. Leaders should never take advantage of their niceness and exploit them. Some may express their disgust, but uh, many would hesitate to and uh, might be imploding, which is very harmful. In the book of Exodus, when Moses met uh, Pharaoh the first time, demanding the liberation of the Israelites, Pharaoh got mad and uh, increased the wo workload of the Israelites by instructing his slave drivers to stop the supply of straw that was used to make bricks. Instead, the Israelites were supposed to collect their own straw and also continue to deliver the same amount of bricks each day. It was unbearable for the Israelites who were already suffering under the slavery of Pharaoh that they went to Moses and Aaron and raged at them for adding salt to their wounds. Exodus 5, 19-21 The Israelite overseers realized they were in trouble when they were told you are not to reduce the number of bricks required of you for each day. When they left Pharaoh, they found Moses and Aaron waiting to meet them. And they said, May the Lord look on you and judge you. You have made us obnoxious to Pharaoh and his officials and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Pharaoh thought he was instilling fear and getting more done out of them. But what he failed to understand is the uprising that erupted as a result of this, which eventually resulted in the exodus and the death of Pharaoh and his men. There is another incident about Rehoboam, son of uh, King Solomon. After his father's death, the assembly of elders requested him to reduce the yoke that Solomon had placed on them. It is recorded in 1 Kings 12 that he proudly proclaimed, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Which means he was going to increase the yoke multiple times than his father. This attitude eventually resulted in the kingdom splitting into two factions, Israel and uh, Judah. It is a call for leaders to make sure the team is not overburdened. Do not attempt to get more work done by adding more responsibilities, however small they are. It could be adding up stress and resentment in the overall scheme of things. So watch out. Number three, encourage taking breaks. A few years back, one of my friends hosted a missionary family who was ministering in the northern part of India. They were going to spend a few days in the city visiting tourist places in and around as a family. My friend told me that uh, when they first arrived, they slept for two days straight. They would eat, sleep, and then wake up and eat and go back to sleep. They did this for two to three days because they were so exhausted from the mission work. Forget a vacation. They never had enough sleep as they were doing God's work in some of the remotest parts of India. Well, I have witnessed a perception uh, that uh, taking a break is a sinful act because 
relaxing and is some sort of wasting time in the minds of many. I'm not sure who propagated such misinformation, but I'm shocked to see uh, this prevailing attitude in some Christians. Look at uh, Jesus' attitude on this when he felt that his team was getting exhausted. Mark 6, 31 to 32. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to the disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Jesus knew that his team needed some time off. So he insisted on going to a solitary place and having some time to relax. In the Jewish tradition, uh, there is a practice called uh, Shmita, which when translated means release. Every seventh year was considered a sabbatical year and all agriculture activities were given a break during this time. Exodus 23, 10 to 12. For six years, you are to sow your fields and harvest the crops. But during the seventh year, let the land lie unplowed and unused. Then the poor among your people may get food from it and the wild animals may eat what is left. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days do your work, but on the seventh day, do not work so that your ox and your donkey may rest and so that the slave born in your household and the foreigner living among you may be refreshed. Remember, even God rested on the seventh day. So as Christians, do not shy away from taking a break from your commitments in your ministry. It gives you time to relax and get refreshed to take on more commitments and deliver them efficiently. Leaders, advocate this policy among your team members. Identify the ones needing that necessary break and encourage them to relax. It's healthy and biblical too. In summary, I pray that uh, the three points encouraging the art of saying no, not pushing the limits of others and taking a break would hopefully help both leaders and Christians to keep them from experiencing a breaking point. Finally, I would I would want to end this podcast with this thought. When Philippians 4:13 says, "I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me," it comes with a caveat. All things within your potential to deliver. So be wise. Until I talk to you next week, this is John signing off. God bless you.